but you also have your YLP attendee from uh, Tennessee here, Miss Caitlin State. She is a junior at Mount Juliet High School in Mount Juliet, Tennessee. Her GPA is 4.438, all right? If you added mine up every grade I've ever had, <laughs> it wouldn't equal that. She's active in the Criminal Justice Club, FCA, Junior ROTC, Student Council, the CSI team member, all right? A captain of the varsity soccer team. Her outreach has been volunteering with Special Olympics in Tennessee from 2014 to present. She's active with her church, Joy Church International, and she is the MJ High School Service Outreach, Kids Camp Soccer Outreach, Domestic Violence Awareness Outreach, and the Junior ROTC's Fallen Officer Charity Run. She has with her here tonight her fantastic parents, Sean and Karen State. But at this time, I'd like you to give a warm welcome to Ms. Caitlin State. Before as an option. 
And we actually, for example, had Club Rush, which is something that my high school offers to showcase all the clubs that we have. And last year, Criminal Justice Club had, I kid you not, six students total. That's being generous. And this year, we had 82 people sign up for Criminal Justice Club. So, yes. And it also means that the applications for YLP will probably go up. So, Captain Parker, have fun with that. And just all in all, this program has given me so much hope and joy and strength that I didn't even know I had in me. And in all sincerity, it's, it's changed my life. And your support to this program has just meant so much to me. And I know it will be the same for any other Tennessee or Kentucky youth that are just as lucky as me to get to attend. And just, it's because it's impacted my life and so many people before me, I hope you will continue to give others the same opportunity that I had to learn and grow. So many problems need to be fixed and so many problems will need to be fixed in the future. So it's crucial for youth to be trained in ways to address this as, our, as the future leaders. And for this reason, I ask you to support this program for its solutions for a better tomorrow. Izzy and Kate today, what an amazing story. And you hear all the lessons she took back and applies to her life every day. I didn't do any of that either. <laughs> it's amazing what a train wreck I'm running. <laughs> when I compare myself to these young people. Uh, but I, I want you to know, I, I couldn't help but sit there thinking, it's like, my goodness, don't you wish we could send these type of representatives to the National Academy, right? Instead of who we're sending these days, like me. <laughs> uh, but that is an amazing part. And you look at these children, you look at these young people, these current leaders, these future people of leadership positions, and they are gonna be the ones who change the world. And because of your commitment, because of your support, they're gonna be doing it right here in Tennessee and Kentucky. Give them another round of applause. Stand up, ladies. Thank you for what you do here, is that you have combined the Kentucky chapter and the Tennessee chapter, and that comes to two amazing young people who attended the Youth Leadership Academy, Youth Leadership Program in Quantico, Virginia. So much of the experience many of us went through, but on a lot more accelerated pace, only 60 people chosen from around the world. Obviously, in this year, a lot of them didn't come in from the other countries. But we are blessed to have with us uh, for the Kentucky attendee uh, that we want to recognize at this moment. I want y'all to give special attention to this and just see how wonderful, and bright, and beautiful the future is with our children. Uh, we have with us Miss Isabel Hensley. She goes to Rose Hill Christian School where she is a sophomore, a violinist, a basketball player, volleyball player, volunteers in her community with Hope's Place Women's Shelter. She is her class president, traveled here with her mom, Heather Hensley, on a five hour trip to come here because her dad, Bill Hensley, was the head jailer in Boyd County, Kentucky, uh, and a graduate of uh, 244, session 244, if anyone is out there. Uh, he did not make it. He has fallen ill and could not come, but they have shown up to make sure that Isabel gets a chance to speak to you. Please make her feel welcome, ladies and gentlemen. Izzy Hensley. Thank you, Captain Parker.
While the days are packed with activities, they are unlike anything I've ever experienced before. One of the first things we did was emergency vehicle training, where we were shown the skill driving of an FBI agent and even got to ride along through a course. We were also able to go to the range where we encountered the firearms training unit and got to practice with the firearms ourselves. Hogan's Alley is one of the highlights of the week where we were given a tour and underwent active shooter training. One of the most unique activities was the bomb squad demonstration. We were shown the equipment the agents use, as well as about a dozen bomb demonstrations, just to name a few of the activities. We visited Fredericksburg Battlefield, Arlington National Cemetery, the Martin Luther King Monument, the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, the Jefferson Memorial, the World War II Memorial, Korean War Viet Veterans Memorial, the Vietnam Memorial, and the United States Marine Corps Museum, all of which were inspiring to see. Days were occupied with outstanding classes and rigorous PT, which would prepare us for the yellow brick road at the end of the week. So many attributes were taught and reinforced throughout the academy. Time management skills were stressed, and failure to arrive promptly was noted at taking care of during PT. We were also given a great amount of responsibility and independence when it came to being prepared for the day and completing assignments given to us by our counselors. One of the biggest things I took away from my time was the importance of honesty and integrity. A leader cannot be a liar. Being honest with others is imperative because if you are not, those around you will never trust you. Our counselors explained to us that nothing kills a career more quickly than dishonesty. Not only must you be honest with others, but just as important as being honest with yourself. Self-awareness is a skill that every leader must acquire. Being honest with yourself means recognizing your faults and errors and taking responsibility. If you are not honest with yourself, then you will never progress. While at Fredericksburg Battlefield, I read a quote by Claire Barton. She states, I have an almost complete disregard of precedent and the faith in the possibility of something better. To me, this quote illustrates that you can always improve if you have the motivation and put in the hard work. The past is not something to judge the future, to judge what the future should be, but to build upon and change for the better. This is the most influential quote I had ever heard, and it became a cornerstone upon which I shaped my life. The final and most important thing to come from my experience was greatly displayed by my counselors. They had a respect and genuine care for all people. When asked why he chose this line of work and why he would give up more than four years of his life to plan and attend multiple sessions of the youth leadership program, my counselor, Tom Krisman, responded, because at the end of the day, joy comes from service. That made me want to strive to be the best person I could be and use my skills to benefit others. One of the other counselors, Captain Tim Gately, always ended his classes by saying, take care of each other. He did that because no matter the situation or topic, it all hinges upon how we interact with those around us. Extraordinary accomplishments require a team, and no matter the struggle, we will succeed if we take care of each other. But now let me tell you this, we also have uh, Tennessee allowed Kentucky to go first because they are the guests in their state.